Good day. I see buns are bloke here, here go. Uh, today I'm going to be working on this um, bottle brush, Calistamin. Um, it's uh, fairly early on in the development. Um, plan is to take the wire off. The wire's been in pretty well because I haven't got around to taking it off, but. They do have quite a fat bark, so where it's bitten in, I'll probably leave those branches unless it's really swollen up after the wire out on the tip. Um, otherwise, I'll leave all the branches where it's cut in. Um, another thing, I've got myself a new turntable. Made it up uh, with the old mechanism, but I made a new top. So I've made it a bit bigger than the old one, so I can hopefully fit a bigger, bigger tree on. And I used a bit of slate, bloody um, polish, floor polish, that I found lying around. Put that on top, just to finish it off. And I thought it'd be a bit harder wearing than the normal um, varnish for wood. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I cut it out of an old bench. Well, not a bench, out of an old cupboard. You can see the top of the cupboard there. This is hardwood rather than pine, so it should be able to handle getting wet a bit easier. So yeah, that's that. Hopefully it'll handle the tree okay. Seems to be working all right. So yeah, that's that. Okay, so back to the tree. I'll probably do that and then I'm not sure, really not sure how I want to style this tree, to be honest. I don't know whether to make like a sort of a bushy type tree like my other bottle brush or whether I want to um, create a bit of a different style, a bit more like your native eucalypts but do it out of a bottle brush I'm not sure I'll um might clear a few branches out the way that I don't need after I've taken the wire off just to um have a bit of a better look to see whether I can make something different out of it. If I can't I'll just do some bushy thing. Um just another thing too if I'm walking around like I pooed my pants or something it's because I did my lower back in so I'll be going a bit slow. Did it in pretty bad, so it took me 15 minutes to get out of bed this morning. Almost peed me pants, I couldn't get out of bed. Needed a pee, but I made it to the toilet just, so anyway. So yeah, a bit, bit slow, a bit ginger, but I'll, I'll be right. Um, yeah, so I'll get to, I'll show you some of the wire that's biting in. Um, just show you how bad it is. I probably won't film taking the wire off. I might show you one or two pieces I might take off for you and then the rest, well, you pretty much just cut it off and unwind it. It's nothing, nothing too serious about taking the wire off, so I don't think you need to see that. Just found, just found a huntsman spider in here. Well, no, it might not be a huntsman, it might be a big jumping spider. Scary looking thing anyway. Anyway. I'll um, show you the cutting in wire. Cheers. Okay, so there's me. Um, either a baby huntsman or a big jumping spider. As you can see, looks pretty scary. Very small for a huntsman, but it could be a baby one. Anyway. I don't mind the little ones, but when they get a bit bigger like that, I'm not a big fan of spiders. Right, just find some badly cutting in wire here. Yeah, you can see in here how badly that's cut that branch almost clean off. Another big cut in here around here that's not too bad um, and it's pretty much like that through a lot of the tree here's another spot you can see some of it here is cut in 
quite hard then it's not too bad a lot of it I think I can keep like I say the um, bark gets quite thick on these trees so although it might look bad in the short term by the time the rest of the tree develops these wire scars have gone anyway you can see it's already starting to get some nice bark on some of the younger trunks which are only a year or so old I've only grown them for a year um, and then the bark on the actual tree you can see how thick the little platelets get so I don't think there's going to be an issue there's some more wire biting in there by the way I'll keep I'll still keep a lot of this stuff um, get rid of some no worries I'll um, get to it cheers okay so here we got some really deep cut in wire here um, where I can get to it I just normally snip and just keep snipping in sections and then I just throw the wire away and get some new stuff next time in the scheme of things it's not very dear you know so I think it's safer for the tree if it's cut in too far then what I do is I very carefully unwind it but you've got to be really careful because it can actually take the bark off in between that bit of wire and that bit of wire it can actually debark the whole way around and that branch will die off so you just sort of unwind it very carefully snip the tail when you get too long okay and then snip that off there's that bit of wire gone off the branch and you can see it's held its shape pretty well um, it's been on too long but I mean it did have its benefit um, I'm not a massive fan of taking wire off, in fact I think it's one of the worst jobs. I don't mind wiring, wiring is actually quite relaxing, therapeutic at times, but I think taking wire off is most probably the worst job in the all of bonsai. So here we got a really bad cut in here. Um, so I've got to really carefully unwind it very carefully you can see it coming out the groove if this here had grown any further over that wire I'd have to either cut the whole branch off because I couldn't get the wire out or you can actually leave the wire in there but the problem with that is it'll create a massive fat spot so it's not you gotta really try and get the wire out see that managed to unwire around that whole thing without damaging it I'll just give you a little bit more of a close-up you can see how deep those grooves are um, like I say they will come out so I'm not too fast should have been done earlier I know but it'll be okay with the bark that these things get it won't be visible but if you had something with a thin bark um, like a crepe myrtle will take years and years for it to heal and you might want to think about cutting that whole branch off and starting again alright no worries I'll take all the wire off and then I'll get back to you cheers okay so I've cut all the wire off that's all gone bit of wire inside the pot here next step is to start styling it um, I'll cut through I'll cut some of the obvious branches off like on the inside of the crutch here I'll cut those off because they're pretty obvious that so you're not going to want them um, and then it's going to be hard to try to just cut back to what I need because I'm not sure what I do need at the moment so what what I tend to do when you do these initial stylings because you got to remember this is only the second styling and the first styling was only a really rough one so it's probably its first really main styling with a lot of different branches that you can use to do the styling oh my back's killing me um, so what, what I normally do is I start at the bottom wire the branches out obviously cut it back to two shoots in each location I've already done this branch just to show you so there's only two shoots 
in each location. And if there's three, cut it back to two. If there's a bar branch, cut it back. Cut one of them off that you don't think you'll need, the least important one. Um, and just carry that on through the whole tree. And wire it, I think wire it as you go, that's what I do. And I also, I don't really reduce the length of the branches until after I've finished wiring up the tree because you're not quite sure where a pad's going to end and where it starts and all that sort of stuff until you've pretty much got the bit of an outline of the tree and the whole thing wired out. I could style this a bit like the other bottle brush I have, which looks good. I could put it into a, I guess a broom sort of style, pom-pom top, and it would look good. Um, but I'm thinking about going a bit weird with this one and trying to style it like a eucalypt and I know that the bottle brushes don't grow like that, but I'm just interested to see what a bottle brush would look like in that sort of style. You don't see that style around much, and to be honest, you guys would probably think it looks a bit weird, and it probably will. Um, and I may end up going back to, to the brush, but just to the big broom style, I mean. With a spider on the back. Jesus. Plenty of spiders on this tree. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm going to try something different with the styling. If it doesn't work, I'll just let it grow again and go back to the bush that it is now. Well, cheers. Good day. Well, a few things have changed. I was trying to sort of get some direction in the tree, but it wasn't really talking to me too much. So I sort of got sick of sick of looking at it and thought I'd better step away for a while. Sometimes it's good to step away from your tree for a while if you can't decide, otherwise you end up cutting off stuff that you wanted to keep, doing some bad cuts. So sometimes if you can't quite decide, it's better to walk away, come back for a while. So I've done that. And I thought in the meantime, while well, I'm having a bit of a break from it, the reason is I normally style it, you know, by almost bonsai looking style. And I really want to make a natural tree, so I'm really trying to be careful that I do it properly. Um, which is the main reason I'm having trouble, because I haven't really styled anything like that. So it's a bit of a challenge for me to try and style it like that. But anyway, I thought in the meantime, well, why not change that this table? Because um, in the beyond the scenes, the missus cracked it at me for buckling her plastic table up a bit. So I copped it for that. Um, swapped it out for this table. Uh, you've seen the new turning table I've got. Also went old Bunno, has got some paint. So there was a bit of a um, few comments about the tin. Generally, you didn't think it was too bad, but it could be better. So I thought while I've got a few moments, I might as well paint that too. Um, so I've got the brush ready, I've got the paint. I'm gonna paint that. I also went to Bunno, it's got some, got some more lights, so it's like a Christmas tree lit up in here now. Only thing is, it's bloody hot, so you see me sweating. It's pretty hot in here. Three of them are halogen and two of them are LEDs, so it really does radiate the heat pretty well. Be good on a cold, frosty night. Um, yeah, so that's it. So I'm going to paint. I'll show you the, I'll show you the extra lights I've got set up. Okay, so this is a crazy amount of lights now. I have two up near the camera. Now an LED that side, LED that side, and I've also got another light up top there, another halogen. So plenty of lighting. Really, even when I'm standing in front of this, I've got this LED behind me here. Even me standing in front of it and moving out the way, because you've got so many lights shining, you don't really get that shadow effect, which is pretty cool. I know any photographer out there would be thinking that's sort of basic stuff, but I can walk around that whole tree now without really creating too much shadow. Whereas before when I only had the one light, you remember, I had all these shadows over it all the time. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'll just show you the paint too while I'm looking around here. It's actually a theatre black, so it's meant to be specially for this. 
absorb all the light. Two litres should be plenty. I'm going to start with just painting that panel and that panel which is behind the table here. I may end up having to paint the panel on that side and the panel on that side but I'm not sure. I'm going to start with just painting this main door here. Um, I was going to put some MDF or some cladding on there and then paint that but I think I'll just paint straight on the corrugation should be right. Um, yes that's about it so I'll get to painting. Cheers. Okay, that's the first coat done. Time for the second coat. My son's finished school. He's come to help. So we're going to do the second coat. Alright, let's get to it, bud. You do the bottom, I'll do the top, okay? Mm -hmm. Come around here. Go around there. Don't put too much on. Just put a little bit on like this. And then wipe it on this side. Okay, and then paint down the bottom. See a lot's changed since um, yesterday. Got the wall painted back here. Um, you can still see in the sides a little bit, you know, the tin on the sides, but well, it's not too bad. I painted the table as well because I had a little bit of leftover paint, but not enough to do the other two panels and the sides. I may still end up doing the panels and the sides, but just for the paint to do that was 50 bucks already. Um, and when I, when I come in a bit closer, you won't really notice it. I could probably bring the table back a little bit and then try and hide it out, but I think this is a pretty good compromise. As you've seen, I've got all the lights going around, so it's pretty bright, pretty warm. So we're loving it. Anyway, so that's the new setup for now. I'll probably still tinker with it. If you've got any more little ideas, let me know, but 
for now I think that's pretty good better than even better than my original setup back at my house two three houses ago so it's been a fairly full-on year I've been at three different houses but this is hopefully gonna be the place I die although hopefully that won't happen for a few years we'll see anyway um, another thing you'll notice I've got a different clothes on and no, I didn't poo myself. It's actually a different day because I had to let the let the paint dry on there and let it dry on the table. Because it took a little while to dry actually. But anyway, so here we are. I painted the table because I'm hoping that that way the table sort of blends into the background and you see more of what's on the table rather than the table. So here we are. I still got to style this tree. Still got wired individual branches, the tools I'll probably need. Be some wire, got some thin stuff, a little bit bigger, bigger again, and then some fairly heavy stuff, although still not that heavy in the scheme of things, and then some quite heavy copper wire. But this is straight out of an electrical cord. It's got no no annealing done to it at all. So it's pretty hard to bend around a branch, but if I have to, I will. I can use it, I have used it in the past, it's just a bit tricky, that's all. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be wiring up some branches here. I'll just bring it in a bit closer while I talk about it because, um, well, it gets rid of that tin on the sides as well, for one thing. Let's bring the camera up a bit. Okay, so as you can see, when I've got the camera in a bit closer and you don't have such a big pot like this has got, you don't really see the side iron on the sides, just see the black behind me. Hopefully everything stands out pretty well. Bit of a good contrast, I hope. If not, well, I'll change it again, paint it again, put another 50 bucks of paint on it. Pretty expensive, but it was meant to be proper theatre paint, so who knows. Probably the same as normal flat black. Um, yeah, so I'm basically going to wire up, and I've thought about this overnight too because I was a little bit lost as what to do last night. And I thought about it, instead of just, normally I have a trunk, I have some branches coming out around the place. I don't really care where they come out as long as it fills in all the gaps, and generally that's what I look to do in most of my bonsais is just fill in all the gaps. If there's a big space here I'll like bend the branch around and fill it in there and just keep filling in so you have a nice round tree fat at the bottom thinner at the top it can go to the side a bit on the apex doesn't matter but that's generally how I do it reasonably symmetrical a little bit over but not a lot of negative space I suppose so anyway I thought about this turning this into a eucalypt sort of style, like an Australian native style, like a Mallee or a eucalypt, and I'm still going to try and do it, even though the bottle brush may not suit it, but it probably won't, because the bottle brush actually grows like a full round of tree. But I thought I'd do it for a bit of fun. Anyway, what I've realised mainly is that a eucalypt, after looking at them and studying a little bit, eucalypts, the branches sort of go up, and then you have this pad on top, and that can happen in a few different spots around the tree and quite often too you'll get all different branches which pad up the branches go like that into pads and they'll all be at a similar level then you'll have sticks looking at you on top of those pads you have more sticks looking at you with another layer of pads a secondary layer of pads and sometimes you'll even get sticks that come out from there and have a third layer of pads and a canopy so pretty much a pad on a eucalypt it's almost like a canopy, little separate canopies around the place. 
more than a pad. It's just little canopies around the place. And they quite often almost cut the tree in half. Like it's almost two trees pushed together, like one tree with a canopy that splits here. And then another tree that's almost looks like it's grown behind, come through and it's got a canopy up here, but it's all from the same tree. Um, so I'll give that, give that a bit of a go, but really it's all about negative space and having all your branches shoot up and then have your canopy. But it's going to be hard because I don't have the ramification on here now. So what's going to happen is you'll probably find a lot of branches go up and then I'll have a tiny bit of green on and I'll have to wait for it to ramify to finish it off properly. So it'll be, you know, take a few years progress and to be honest it might look like a piece of crap when I'm finished with it. And that's fine, you know, not all bonsais turn out to be great. And you can always work on it next time and improve it. So it doesn't matter, you know, just give it a go. It doesn't quite work out well. Try and fix it next time, you know, sit back, look at it while it's growing again. And get a bit of an idea of where you'd like to take it in the future. So I'm probably going to do most of this on um, Hyperlapse and then just explain at the end what sort of troubles I went through and maybe why the tree looks so crap or hopefully it could look okay but I doubt it, it'll probably look pretty crappy um, and where I want to improve it or what I want to do so anyway so that's the plan on this one hope you enjoy, I hope the background's okay, let me know um, anyway and also too with all these lights, I'm standing in front of a light you can see, as I walk around the tree, I walk in front of the camera there, so that's obviously going to create a shadow, but if I walk around, it doesn't actually change much in the way of shadows, which is really good. I can walk around behind the camera, and it doesn't really change it much, so that's pretty good. I like before when I had big shadows over the tree when I'm working on them. All right, cool. I'll get to it, and... Um, yeah, sorry I'm not going to play this because I'd like to explain everything I do, but really, I don't know what I'm going to do on it. Um, so I'm just going to sort of slowly plug away, put it on hyperlapse and go through all those sort of like little things myself because otherwise it would be a very long video of me trying to work it out. Like this could take me three hours to try and work out what I'm trying to do because I don't know what I'm doing with it, really. Um, so it wouldn't be very, very good to watch. So anyway, I'll get to it, do it on hyperlapse and explain at the end how I went, what I could improve, all that stuff. No worries. Cheers for watching. That was your bonsai blood. Let's get to it. Cheers.
and I welcome back. Um, I've done pretty much what I'm going to do. It's taken a lot of hours, probably four hours. I know in hyperlapse you probably only watch it for two or three minutes with a bit of music playing, but it's taken me a long time to get my head around it because it's a completely different style to what I normally do. Um, the native sort of style in Australia is a very rough, natural sort of style and all upright and almost the opposite to what you taught when you, well not taught but what you learn just by watching YouTube and stuff when you're looking at bonsai and that's fine, you know, like a um, you know, bonsai like I do most of my olives, they look really good but I just want to try something different um, it's good to try both, but I'll tell you what, this is a lot of a challenge. Um, but then again, this is the first time I've tried this sort of a natural upright style with different sort of levels in the branching. Um, and the stock wasn't that great for it. I mean, bottle brush is not even meant to be like this, it's meant to be like a bush. Um, but I think the trick is, especially with Australian natives, is to have a lot of... Um, negative space um, but even natural style you know like they say oh yeah natural style you just cut a few branches clip and grow easy as just do like that but <laughs> I found far from that I, I find the bonsai style you can wire the main branches in place and then you just sort of nicely trim around the place to make it all look nice and neat and a nice silhouette um, whereas this natural style I found I had to wire pretty much everything um, so whoever said natural style was easy I'm not sure but it was actually pretty challenging for me I mean it's still a long way to go um, I'll talk about the tree you know like um, a lot of the branching up here is just one single straight leader all the way to a little growth tip at the top. Um, and the reason for that is because there's no division down further. And that's happened a fair bit. Some of the branches are okay, like there's a few here that go up like fingers, which is what, which is sort of like what they look like in the natural environment. Um, just trying to think. So what's going to happen, I guess, is all this is going to divide and grow up. And then possibly hit into this branch. But by the time it hits this branch, this branch would have grown up. And I would have stripped all the leaves back in here to show the branching. And just had a little pad here. This here, same thing, will grow up. And I'll keep stripping all the uh, leaves and foliage back underneath to reveal all the branching, same here, same here, everywhere you see all these straight ones is going to eventually show branching going up as it all shoots and grows, even these here, um, and they'll all grow up together because I've done it sort of together, so they'll all grow up together now and I can, um, yeah, try and hopefully show you more branch structure as it grows and make it look quite natural. Um, you might be able to tell, I'm not sure, that I've got a couple of different levels of foliage. I've got this one real low branch, which quite a lot of trees do. You notice too, all the branches go up at the start, all go up. All these twigs go up, up, up. So there's a lot of upwards growth as well as going into like a foliage sort of pad, which is almost like the top of a tree, but there's several of those around the tree um, yeah levels there's one level here then I've got another sort of half level which is a really close in foliage which it might look immature to some people but a lot of our natives actually keep actually grow these little clumps and there's one on the back here which is at the same level these little clumps right in close to the trunk like that um, and there's another one here and here so pretty much you've got that level you've got that one, that one and that one all at that level 
Then you've got another level where this back branch here, this one and this one sit. Then you've got a level sort of here, on these two here, the level sort of there, which eventually they're going to mesh into the same level as this. Maybe this one I'll let go a bit more actually, yeah I will. So I'll have a level here, a level here, and then this one will grow on its own up top and bush out a bit. So the level there, one, two, three, four, five, six different levels in the tree. Um, it's going to get quite tall. I think the only thing I struggled with too is that um, if you look at the trunk proportions to one of our Australian natives, um, they're quite thin at the trunk compared to the height. I found this bottle brush actually was a little bit too fat at the base and went to a real fast taper, whereas a lot of the Australian natives are quite elegant as far as just a slow, nice taper going up into different branch pads around the place, up in the top, up in the top of the tree. Um, and it's a really, you know, slow, subtle sort of taper, whereas this is quite an abrupt taper, especially here where it got cut. I have carved that, so it does look a bit better, but yeah, I think for a first attempt, this is the first time I've tried this style. Um, and yeah, I think for a first attempt, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, so like I said, been a big video, done the painting, done the tree. New style for me, it took four hours probably. Been a lot of effort, but I really want to try and get into some more natural style Australian natives. I'm going to keep doing you know, the full canopy style bonsai as well. I just want to get into a bit of everything, you know, not just not just stick with what I'm comfortable with, because I'm fairly getting fairly comfortable with just having a, a nice canopy now. So I want to, you know, create some more natural, rough, really rough looking trees, you know. Something that really makes you stop and look at it and think, wow, that looks like something I've seen at the backyard, you know. Not... <laughs> Not me and something on the rubbish pile, but you know, like a nice big native tree sitting in the back backyard somewhere. Some big old native. Um, so yeah, it's been a big video. Anyway, cheers for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. To Aussie Bonsai Bloke. Um, I'll give you a, a good spin of the tree going out. No worries. Cheers for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Leo, 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 Leo. What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? What's going on? You crazy dog, ain't you? Hmm? You crazy dog. Ow, ow. Oh, oh. You like that bottle brush, don't you, bud?